Welcome to Holland. It was here that 400 years ago we first witnessed the extraordinary effects that money and the market can have on our collective minds and how it can lead to pretty mad behavior. Since the 2008 financial crisis there has been much talk of economic bubbles and every now and then the story of the Dutch tulip mania of 1637 pops up. During this mania single tulip bulbs were traded for amounts of money worth upscale houses in Amsterdam. How this happened and why tulips of all things were the centerpiece of this economic folly will be explained in the coming few minutes. Welcome to Chicharane. To the Dutch, the 17th century is known as the Gouden Eeuw, or the Golden Age, and it's easy to see why. In this period, the tiny republic of the United Netherlands conquered a global empire, started the first joint stock company, invented the modern stock exchange, successfully invaded Britain, founded New York City, defeated the biggest empire in the world and subsequently wrote the Declaration of Independence on which this one was based, and all the while dominating global trade in everything from sugar and spice to everything, well, awful. With all those novelties and developments also came a new sort of society, where other European countries had aristocrats with elaborate court cultures, supported by a huge class of poor people, the Dutch were inventing the middle class. The hard-working, self-made burghers of the Dutch Republic had no titles to show who was king of the hill, so they needed another way to settle hierarchy. The answer back then, as it is today, was consumption. No, not that consumption, the more happy, buying things consumption. Much like today, there was fierce competition within this class to outshine each other. Now, because of their Protestant beliefs, the Dutch of this period may seem a bit boring compared to the more flamboyant peoples of the world. But in their own way, the rich and famous did show off. They did so by wearing fancy neckwear, commissioning very costly art, and consuming all the new exotic products that global trade brought into the city. One of the products the Dutch merchants brought to Holland was a tulip. It thrived in the Dutch climate, became a symbol of the Golden Age, and has remained a symbol of the country ever since. In the 17th century, it became very fashionable for the well-to-do to plant tulips in their gardens to demonstrate how much they were in sync with the age of success, and of course, to show off their wealth. Tulips were such a powerful symbol of success in the Golden Age that this man, Klaas Pietersson, a brilliant doctor, writer and scientist, changed his name to Dr. Nicolas Tulp after the Dutch word for tulip. Dr. Tulp was the author of a book commonly known as the Book of Monsters, in which he recounted stories of medical wonders and introduced the European public to exotic animals such as the orangutan. Nowadays Dr. Tulp is mostly known for being the subject of one of Rembrandt's most famous paintings. But when the painting was made, the shoe was very much on the other foot, and it was Tulp who made Rembrandt famous. But there were many other ways that could be and were used to show off. So why was it the tulip that created such a mania? In order to understand that, we must look at the flower's nature and its process of growth. Firstly, tulips are not that easy to breed. It takes around a decade for a seed to grow into a flower. Then, after just a few years of show, the flower dies. The tulips do produce offspring in the form of seeds, but those again will take 10 years of care until they grow into flowers. Luckily however, you can make a few clones every year the flower blossoms. These clones will become flowering bulbs in a much shorter period of only 3 years. The second important characteristic is that tulips only blossom during a few weeks every year between March and May. During this time Holland looks like this and tourists come from all over the world to visit the Kirkhof. In this period the tulips cannot be moved or they will perish. You have to wait for the flower to go back to its bulb form and retreat completely below ground. Then, between June and September, the flower can be moved safely to be planted in autumn so it can blossom again in the coming spring. Because of this, the flower can only be exchanged between people during a limited time each year. So let me sum that up. 1. Tulips are very slow to grow. 2. You can only make a few clones each year. And 3. You cannot move them whenever you want. But these issues by themselves did not create the tulip mania. Normal tulips were in fact quite affordable despite these difficulties. True. Some tulips however were unusual. Instead of being one uniform colour, they showed these distinctive marks. Because these tulips were so rare, they became the ultimate status symbol. Nowadays, we know that the lines on the tulips are the result of a disease called the tulip breaking virus. The virus affects the bulb and actually slows the development of the plant. If you want to create a mosaic tulip, you only have to infect a normal tulip's bulb, and voila! Quick side note there, that makes it sound quite nice and not like a disease at all. But the virus does harm the tulip quite badly and in many cases even kills the plant. 400 years ago, the reasons behind the flame-like patterns were unknown. What was known however, was that they were very, very rare and due to the limited cloning were going to remain so. Even more so because seeds from rare broken tulips produced normal single color offspring. Now, imagine amongst all the normal flowers in your garden you spot one broken tulip. 
You may want to sell that flower, reasoning that you paid 10 florins for your entire flower bed and you can make it all back and then some by selling this one flower to me, since I offer you 12 florins for it. Of course, I cannot actually take the flower with me, because pulling it out of the earth would kill it. So what you actually sell to me is a promise of a future sale of the tulip. I buy from you the right to move the bulb when it is ready to be moved. On a stock market, this right to buy something for a certain price somewhere in the future is a derivative known as a future. So imagine I know I can sell the tulip future to my brother, who is willing to pay 25 florins for it. I then reason that I can either keep the right to the flower myself, or sell it on again to a rich friend of mine who will pay up to 50 florins for such a rare specimen. Now, so far this may cause a quick rise in price, but it does not yet make it a bubble. People are still willing to pay money for actually owning the flower. But to the business savvy Dutch middle class, the rapidly rising price spelled opportunity. Now more and more people started buying tulip futures. Not because they wanted to own the flower, but because they thought they could make a profit, selling it on again. These people speculated on the future price of tulips being higher than the price that they had paid. But of course, there was a limit to what even the richest people were willing to pay for a flower. As soon as the price in the market exceeds that real price, we have an economic bubble. People are only buying the flower as a means of speculation, not to really ever plant it in their garden. All you need for the bubble to burst is some indication that there will be no more buyer for an even higher price. As soon as the confidence in a future profitable sale disappears, prices drop back to the natural price level. As the date of the actual tulip exchange drew closer, people started to realize that they had paid fortunes for only a flower and they started doubting whether this had been a wise investment. When in February of 1637, possibly due to plague scares, no one showed up for a flower auction in Haarlem, the flower market collapsed. The speculators who owned the futures tried to sell their investments in a frenzy, trying to minimize their losses, speeding up the price drop. Within a few days in February, the price of tulips dropped from the equivalent of a house like this to that of a house like this. The tulip suffered severely from its role in the affair, so much so that Dr. Tulp had the tulip marking his front door chiseled off following the mania. But when he died 37 years later, the tulip's reputation had recovered, and the flower marks his final resting place to this very day. The good news for you is that nowadays you can go to Amsterdam and indulge in buying as many tulips as you like. By current rates you would need to sell millions of tulip bulbs to buy even the smallest canal house. The bad news though is that no amount of money will buy you the real deal. The mosaic tulips of the heart of the 1637 bubble, like the Semper Augustus, the most expensive of them all, are all extinct, and none of us will ever see what the fuss was really about. Thank you for watching. If you liked our video, please click here to subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos in the future.